Gentlemen, I believe that we are in space. The final frontier. <laughs> One of the frontiers. The frontier? I get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Andrew Whipple, and I am here with actually the host today, uh, Eric Watson. Hello. And, of course, providing commentary as ever is Mr. Aaron Flores. Hola. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at Starbound today. This game just came out, right? It's technically just in beta, though. Right, You, if you've pre-ordered the game, which you can do so on Steam or at playstarbound.com, then you gain access to the beta, which just started on uh, December 4th. And this is a very, you know, this is not a Blizzard beta, this is an early beta. Um, it's not even quite, you know, feature complete. They're adding stuff left and right. There's actually a big patch coming soon that's going to completely rebalance combat and probably wipe all the characters away. But uh, it's still, I mean, stable and playable. It, it looks a lot like Terraria. Yeah, this is basically Terraria in space. Uh, it's by the same artist. He uh, formed another company and made... Uh, Starbound, which has been a multi-year process now, but if you've enjoyed Terraria, then you will very much find a lot to like with Starbound. And even if you don't know about these, what, I guess were the sandbox games, Starbound yeah. is a is a pretty great one. Well, I know Aaron, you've sunk a ton of time into Terraria. <laughs> don't even remind me. It was time well spent. Very time, very well spent in Terraria. So I'm actually really interested to see what this is because. I would like to see the evolution of Terraria because mm -hmm. the, the, the patches that they added onto it at the end of the day didn't really engage me enough as it initially did. What does that mean? I can't take it much longer. I like got the bottom there. It came up. Well, there's it. Oh, that's my... Uh, you have to worry about food. You have hunger. <laughs> my character's depressed, I guess. Okay. Uh, to no. prevent you, I guess, from <laughs> idling... <laughs> Sanity meters now. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and need some steak. It's uh, probably a good call. But yeah, you have to worry about uh, hunger and your warmth in this game. So we start I out. Need more. <laughs> he always needs more. He loves eating that raw steak. Uh, so I start out. Every character gets their ship. You can choose from six different races. So instead of just humans, you've got uh, bird people, plant people, robot people, ape people, and fish people. Which all have, you know, clever names, but they're Wait, all humanoid fish things. fish people in space? Oh, yeah. Fish people in space. <laughs> they're creepy looking, too. Um, and they all have a lot of cool uh, little customization options you can do. You can, I mean, it's surprising what you can do with these little pixels. But everybody gets a ship. You can customize your ship. It comes with its own uh, storage bay. I've been playing for, I think, 15 hours just since Wednesday. So, uh, way too much time, but... Uh, you can customize your ship how you want, put all your shit in here. I found just all kinds of random crap just lying around the world. This is all extra stuff. <laughs> the bed, the gong, statue, anchor. This stuff right. should make anybody that's into sandbox games salivate, where you just find cool shit to put in your house. I guess so. I mean, I, I never... <laughs> I've never really gotten too deep into these games because, as you've said, it's a big sandbox. There's a lot of stuff to do. It's almost like a make-your-own-fun kind yes, of game. Yes, so. yes, very much what? so. Why don't you take us through this? Like, what would you do if, if we weren't speaking to you right now? Mm -hmm. What would you do to kick off your adventure? So right now you can beam down. We'll go down to our home planet. You can either use this little uh, teleporter thing on the left side or just your little beam down button. But uh, that will take us to our home planet. Or no, actually, no, it won't. I'm on the wrong planet, aren't I? Well, let's, let's just go here first. <laughs> uh, All right. My ship, I forgot where my ship was docked. <laughs> So this See, is no, this looks like Terraria. Yes, yes. So this is just a random planet that we happen to be uh, hovering over, and this is the interface is very much like Terraria. You know, there's caves. You can mine shit with a. Oops, and there's bad guys. Let's see if we can take these guys mm. out. Unlike Terraria, though, I have guns. Guns. Yeah, but I had a chakra on me. Terraria. That thing was cool, yeah. Oh, those, those things look vicious. The, the designs are crazy. Everything is very different looking. I've seen probably a dozen different alien species already, probably more. 
Is that but, like a uh, tormented squirrel? Like that thing was <laughs> weird. And you never know what name they are, so we always have to come up with just random names. Why? Uh, based on what we think it okay, looks what, like. So now, what are you doing? You're collecting pixels. Pixels can be currency, which are used to make different things. In addition to the kind of resources you need, you can see like uh, you'll need coal. You can sit here and mine the dirt. So even though it's space, like I'm still using a pickaxe because you still start off on kind of the bottom of the food chain resource-wise. Alright, so you've got a couple of people in here with you, it looks like. Yeah, so this is this is my own server I'm hosting. Unfortunately, uh, Starbound continues the woes Terraria had, where you have to join using direct IP addresses, and the server host for Starbound actually has to uh, get into port forwarding, and it kind of sets everything up, so... Uh, yeah. I've actually written a little guide on that at the site, uh, and I've set mine, my server up, which I leave up most of the day, and my friends uh, hop in. Uh, one of my friends is down here with me now, hanging out, following me around, <laughs> watching the stream. I, so, I like the graphic of, <laughs> of when you double jump. It's like a little boost. Just <laughs> so that's actually something I found. That's an item I found called a tech, which acts as a, as a rare Watch skill. Out, demon squirrel. Yeah, those demon squirrels. But uh, you get four different tech slots, and you just find them in the wild, but you essentially find all these special abilities you can get. And a lot of them are either platforming-based or combat-based or give you a buff or something. But it's a really cool thing to find. It's you know something you'd find on a treasure chest or something. Now, did you have stuff like that in Terraria? I remember there was you like had some spells. And stuff that you could find. I mean, it, so tech is essentially the spells. Yeah, like you basically got like flying wings toward the end of like Terraria when you. It, and it, it's it still got pretty crazy. Yeah, and it's still you know very much loot based too. There's a lot of different uh, loot you can have. I mean, there's I've got weapons that shoot things out in front of them. I don't. There we go. This one does something. Um, that all do something special. They might shoot things out. You just kind of have to try them out. But the I mean the animations are just really crazy fun. <laughs> yeah, it it looks it looks pretty cool like for the most part. But so tell me, what is the objective though? You're just going to random planets. You're just mining stuff. You're using pixels for whatever the hell that actually. Even yeah, is. I mean there's there's a progression system where you start off stone and you go. You know, copper, iron, and, and all that. Uh, and you, there are bosses you can fight, and those kind of unlock the next tier of equipment. But um, it's it's really just a game about exploration, and uh, they are going to add an actual quest line to the game. In fact, I've got a quest right now, which is essentially to uh, set up the first boss. We actually used another of my friends to fight him already. But uh, there's a well, there's a tutorial it. line of quest. <laughs> I don't think we can craft. I should have prepared for that. I don't think we can craft it yet. Um, oh. Yeah, but uh, well, well, tell me though, what do you need to craft this thing to summon the boss? Because if I remember correctly, Aaron, that's what you were telling me before. Like, you just have to, you would summon every boss in Terraria, right? Yeah, like you had to, like it. It, it was this weird, like kind of self-paced difficulty curve where you yeah. launched the boss when you felt you were ready for the boss. And uh, when I launched the first boss, I was like way, way, way overqualified to be fighting that guy. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's a really interesting system where you have to forge the uh, the ritual, I guess you can call it, to summon the demons. Like every boss was like that. Yeah, and I, it, it very much goes in the vein with the game where it's kind of at your own pace. And uh, the second boss is like that too. You have to craft a bunch of robot stuff. So I'm going to actually teleport... One of the advantages to having friends is you can beam to their ship, and that allows you to jump across different planets quite quickly. So this is a friend of mine's ship, which you can see he hasn't done anything inside of his ship. How sad. But he's a fish person, and so his ship looks like a big space fish ship. Which is fantastic for him, I guess. <laughs> but from I his ship... <laughs> That'd be kind of cool though, like if you couldn't go in their ship because it was just all water, like he had. Oh yeah! <laughs> yeah. I just start drowning. Yeah. yeah, that'd be that'd be weird. So if I beam down from here, we should appear on our home planet, which might take a second to load. But uh, this is where we've actually built all of our stuff. So this is where we all started, and this is the. Oh shoot! So you built all this stuff? Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine is a big. Minecraft and Terraria guy, and he actually built about eighty percent of this, and the rest of us just kind of added on. Uh, Wait, you had there's a genie lamp. 
There is a genie lamp yeah. in that room. <laughs> so there are a ton of items that you can find, and a lot of them don't do anything. They're just decorations. Like the toilet what? right there. Like, it's just a decoration. Like, all the shit. Like, I mean, the... Some of the, you know, the containers you can actually, you know, use as containers, but... There's so much that's just decorative because they know that people love to just find cool shit and say, hey, I want to put that in my house. <laughs> right, right. Are you sure that's a toilet? That looks like an actual seat. Like a I will show chair. you. We have a shit room. I will show you our shit room. I believe. Let's see, where is our shit room? Oh, that was our server. Okay, what, there's where the, by the way, what is there's that, nuclear what is that septic thing tank. doing trapped? It's just, it's like sitting there in, in that room just trapped with saws or something yeah that's one of my friends is kind of an asshole and so we summoned this M you can summon your own npcs to kind of fill out your home and just let them walk around and he decided to throw all these saw pits in there for the poor bastard so wow yeah it's bad times but this is i mean we built all this you know in the span of a couple days just screwing around having fun uh but it's got all the same crafting tables as terraria had you've got your uh you know your metal works and your furnace and your yard thing but you can see here when I interact with it it'll pull up all the different things you can craft you can make a shit ton of weapons all of, and since I'm a bird person all my stuff is uh, you know called the pecker the carver the hatchling all those cleverly named things <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> brick but, on a stick I mean, a lot of this stuff is the same as Terraria. Like, you know, you've got your torch. You still have torches you have to use. But the idea is that the end game goes way farther because you can start getting into the sci-fi stuff after a while. So you can start building, like, the second boss. You have to build a robot. You just put all this robot shit together, and that all takes, you know, pixels as your money, and then, uh, you know, everything else costs whatever you need. But you have to mine for shit, and then you turn that into stuff that you need to summon the bosses. And you kill the bosses, but the biggest appeal is just exploring and finding cool shit. And half the shit is just decorative you can put in your house, and the other half is, you know, equipment that makes you look stronger. Or is stronger and then makes you look cooler. They actually have two equipment slots. One of them is aesthetic only, and then one of them is what your stats actually matter, which I think every RPG needs. So you can always look how you want, but then you can always have the best armor you can have. So why don't we go... Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm sort of at a loss for words because, again, I, when it comes to games like this, I never... I, I think they're cool in a way, but my interest level in them just is never held high enough to just continue doing it because it is a make-your-own-fun game. Like you're yes. going to build stuff for a while, and then you're sort of done with it. You're like, all right, that's cool because the multiplayer, it, it seems like it's always more of a pain in the ass than anything. And where where are you? Is that me that's dying from the... Oh, I actually went inside that tent. <laughs> oh, that's... Okay, that's a tent. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, you can actually sleep and you'll heal in the beds. So some of the stuff you can interact with, like I can hit this chair, and then I'll look out my little glass window, and you can just kind of sit there. You can sleep in the bed and you'll slowly heal. The early game is crazy difficult, too. When you We have no armor and no weapons... And shit just tears you up. And since there's money in the game, which Terraria didn't have, there's actually a death penalty. In addition to having to spawn back in your ship. And you lose like 30% of your money, which is pretty huge. So the plan right now is we are going to beam to our ship. Beam, beam to the ship. Yeah, you can see one. when I chat, it actually appears above my head. Hey, beam to my ship, assholes. And then we're gonna look at the map. See, there's a there's a friend of mine that's he's got a sniper rifle and he's a fish person, so he does look pretty freaky. Yeah, that's <laughs> sort of weird. All right, so when we look at the map, this is our current planet that we're on. It's a forest biome. Each planet actually has its own biome. You've got forest, arid, desert, jungle, tundra, just, you know, every kind of, uh, uh, you know, ecological system you could want. And then the threat level corresponds to what kind of level you should be there, although that's also being uh, completely rebalanced in a, in a new patch. But if I right-click, I can go out to the uh, solar system, 
and you can look at all the other plants in the area and you can see this is where we are right now with the little red dot and then our uh, our home planet which is where our friends are parked or right here which is where we started so we can actually move to any of these other planets and explore huh. them if we wanted to or we could right click again and now we're looking at the entire sector and once you realize that each one of these contains a solar system oh my god come with on. multiple <laughs> systems come on. and then you left click and you go back in you're like holy shit each one of these is its own procedurally generated landmass absolute but, inc <laughs> so, so but again I, I mean i know that they're going to give you quests and tell you to do something like oh you might need water pixels or something to summon this boss like it's just it just seems does it go deeper than that or is it really just like what we said it was you know it, it's just you i build think it's stuff with your friends and yeah that's it. i think it's what we said it was uh, they are going to apparently be adding a uh an overall main quest storyline, which would be interesting, because Terraria really didn't have that, um, which would be really cool. And apparently, that's not going to be added till much later on in the in the beta or maybe in the final game. But uh, for now, it's very much one of those, you know, make your own what you will and just kind of explore what you want. In fact, and not only that, Andrew. So we're in the Alpha sector now, which is kind of the first one. You can also Woo! go. So this is all, uh, you know, there's tons and tons and tons of these systems. Like I haven't even looked at. You know, I've only I've played 15 hours and I've been to probably four or five planets, and that's not including galaxies or any. I mean, it's just insanity. But you can go to Beta, and now suddenly that opens a whole nother map of galaxies in it. <laughs> okay. So the yeah. the amount of content is if if you like Terraria and the appeal, and you're just like, man, if only I had multiple like areas, like your mind should be absolutely blown right now. Well. It just seems ridiculous. No one is ever going to be able to... Like, what's the point of, this of is, having... Like... This is the kind of game... Oh, this is a good one to jump to. There's like five planets in here. So, and the way they do it is by, is by fuel. You can see I've actually got limited fuel. It obviously costs uh, less fuel to pop from one planet to another within your same area. But if you're trying to jump from one galaxy to another, it's going to take a huge chunk of your fuel. And fuel is uh, either wood or coal, of course. <laughs> Apparently it's like a, a steampunk age spaceship. Yeah, but it's another way that it kind of limits you on on what you can do. So let's just try and go to a random ass planet. Let's go to this. Uh, you want to see desert, arid, snow? Let's go to snow. Let's see. No, you know what? Let's go to arid. Threat level six. Threat level let's six. Let me see yeah. if I have enough. I don't, I don't even know what there. that means, but it sounds vicious. No, I don't think we have. So what happens when you get a thousand fuel? I guess I don't have enough fuel to get there. It's saying no way. Let's see if I can plug in the fuel. I need more fuel, guys. Let's see. So interface is very similar to... Oh, that should be enough. Uh, I suppose that's my question to you as well. Having sunk lots of hours, I'm going to assume, into something like Minecraft and then Terraria as well. How, how excited are you that you're essentially playing the same game but yeah. it's just it's upgraded um, yeah i mean it's way. it's really you know everything for fans of terraria and and the minecraft type games i mean this is definitely what you want i would think like there's there's more things they can add to it and you know what's impressive right now is it is an early beta but they're they're just patching it constantly you, I mean, look at this. This is a cool <laughs> scene right here. You can see the yeah, the actual. That's... You know, it's not just a loading screen. They actually went as far as to do a little scene like this. Yeah, it's really cool. I appreciate it for sure. But again, you know, my question goes to: so why why would even continue to play Terraria when this game finally? I would does not. Yeah, I mean, this is. I think this is the next the next thing. Like, this is the game you want to play. <laughs> Because right, okay. this is this is just having like millions of terrarias, like millions of those planets, and it's got more of everything. It's it's got a longer, uh, you know, system for crafting. There's another friend of mine. This looks like a pirate. <laughs> you can see the customization yeah, is is pretty awesome. <laughs> he's uh, got, what is he? He's a, a space pirate. He yes. Has a bow. Yeah, so, so I'm... This guy, this other dude has a high-powered sniper rifle. Yep. I'm assuming that combat <laughs> really factors into this game. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the main suit. And in fact, you know, like I said, they're actually introducing a huge major patch that's going to rebalance how how combat works in this game. But, 
you know, if you're in it for like the 2D, you know, action platforming combat, there's other games that do that much better. This is very much the exploration. Gotcha. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, All right, so I, I'm actually. Why don't we go down to that planet and let's mm -hmm. do some exploring? You're the boss. It's like you take me through <laughs> the life of the Starbound. That's planet. right. And this is kind of how we'd roll. You can see there's like four of us right now in this group, okay, and there's right. what is that thing? Oh, we... So you got to come up with a clan name. Yeah, exactly. And all right, so you just killed Slothera. <laughs> so, and part of the appeal too is there's a lot of randomly. Oh, look at that! A weird ass. <laughs> yeah, we had to dig down there. I mean, there's there's what, a lot what of just. What the world are those things? <laughs> like they just. <laughs> it's... You'll find a lot of randomly generated like dungeons and uh, events and stuff. That's that's just really cool. And and Terraria had a very few of these. Terraria had a few dungeons um, that were kind of the same in every zone. But uh, like we found an above ground temple that actually went upwards. You had to climb up to get to the top of it, and it was just a crazy big dungeon full of guys you had to fight and. Just a cool thing to find, just out in the middle of some random planet. Sure, right. I mean that—that that, that seems that seems like what you'd want to try and find in a game about exploration. If you want to look for all like the cool, yeah. You're not expecting what to find as far as like relics or equipment pieces go. Because you said you found that pulse jump, right? Yeah, which is huge because that, you know, nobody else of my friends has found any kind of tech yet. So that was a really cool thing to we're like. Oh man, where'd you, you get it? that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just one of those random. Uh, it was like a mining area that had a bunch of like tents and and stairs and stuff set. Look at all these different aliens. This is crazy. <laughs> and I just found it in a They're chest all... somewhere. Some of them look like things straight out of Cave Story. I never played that game. <laughs> you never played Cave Story? No. <laughs> I need to. Oh dear, oh, he was goodness. doing some damage. So we've actually got pretty uh, good armor and weapons for our encounter. And obviously there's four of us, so I don't know how oh. well balanced the game actually is for, <laughs> for I don't four know, people. Like, damage wise, like you took out your laser sword and did like a hundred damage. Yeah, like, the sword's pretty strong. Now there's like mercenary dudes like coming through. Do enemies attack each other? Like would those... they can? Yeah. Okay, so we're coming up to in a a special area right now. We just killed that guy that was like hooded, and uh, you can see this is just kind of a randomly generated uh, event thing, and it comes. There's a chest right here. You know, it's got coal, gold, ore, and pixels, which is pretty awesome. And then you can take stuff, so it's like, hey, I like those skulls on a stick. I'm going to take that, and then we're going to stick those in our house. <laughs> oh, shoot, okay. All right, that's... And then, you know, it's, it's a concept of, like, you can literally take everything that's not nailed down. Like, pretty much everything yeah. can be, you know, you, you like the walls? Like, all right, we'll just take the walls. Like, that shit's cool, too. <laughs> Uh, you took the small. It's, it's a, you know what? It's it's a loot. Yeah, exactly. You can take the chest. It's a loot person's like dream because there's just you can just literally take everything. It's a male Barbie playhouse. Oh god, yes. Okay, here's another one. Wow, this is cool. So here's just a random house. There's it looks like plant people in there. And uh, let's see how they respond to us. They all have. Could they actually be hostile? To say. Can you actually? Could you kill them? We could kill them if we wanted to. Yeah, they don't look too terribly hostile. All my friends are quickly looting the place because that's, you know, what you do in these kind of games. <laughs> Green fingers. More stuff. Sassy? Ooh, bombs. Yeah. So we better we better kill them with some uh, bombs. So so you're gonna be you're gonna they're gonna be friendly to you, and as you literally put their house in your pocket, <laughs> they're just not gonna do anything to no, you. No, they're just gonna take it. All right, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to use one of these bombs. We're gonna see how that goes over. Oh, you killed uh, flesh killer. Okay. <laughs> oh, I killed my friend too. Oh, no. oh my god. So that was collateral happens? damage. Look at this. He doesn't even give a shit either. So, <laughs> my poor friend. Uh, what if, no, that was actually me that killed her. What, yeah. So what happens now that? <laughs> Now that you smoked your own friend, so he'll he'll spawn time. he'll spawn back at the at his ship, and then have to and then have to spawn back down. Unfortunately, there doesn't appear to be a way to change where you can spawn on a planet right now. I don't know if they're going to change that in the future, but that's why a lot of people build their houses just wherever you first spawn down on a planet, because that seems to be the only spot. This guy is just a man on his own now. Yeah, that's oh uh, the tree. <laughs> Should we put him? Yep. Okay, put him out of his misery. Nice. Oh, Timber! <laughs> yeah, it's the tree animation's greatness. Crazy. The enemy variety is really crazy too, 
And I imagine just because everything's pixelated, like, you can churn out these enemies quite quickly, since a lot of them share the same kind of animation. There is day-night cycle. And in fact, you have to worry about your warmth uh, at night. You have to keep torches and stuff nearby. A little, uh, similar to the food meter, a little warmth meter will appear at the bottom of the screen. It just, it seems so strange to me that a game that doesn't really focus too much on combat has so many slots for weapons and equipment and all these survival-based traits that you need to do when really people just want to put as many pixels or weird dirt things in their pocket as possible. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I think, you know, combat is something they could always improve in these games. I don't think that's ever been a strong suit. And I'd like to think maybe that's because they're trying a little better by having all these, you know, different tech abilities and, you know, guns and in addition to swords and bows and hopefully we'll see some cooler, um, you know, combat mechanics or something, but uh, it would definitely be an improvement. This place just ends in a lake right now. So, in it, like you so know, like you Terraria, you can spend like your whole time in the caves and just keep trying to go lower and lower and find cooler shit. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like I've heard and I've actually seen people just keep digging down and they eventually get to like, hell or like, the core of the planet. Yeah, this says the same thing. You'll you'll get to lava eventually, and uh, then you can't go any lower. But you can walk around the world and you'll appear. Uh, it's round, which is in the sense that if you walk all the way to the right, if you mark you know a spot. And you start going right, and you walk all the way around. Eventually, you will come upon your spot uh, from the right. So you'll you'll wrap around the whole surface area. So we've done stuff like surface runs, where we just run across the whole surface of a planet and try to just find cool shit that's on the surface. <laughs> Do you think you're ever gonna get something where you could just zoom out the view and you could actually see what's in the planet specifically? We were talking about that. That would be pretty badass, actually, or be able to like terramorph a whole planet like with one go, like some kind of planet smashing thing. It'd be kind of, it, it would be sort of neat. And, you know, nobody really knows, because the game just came out for early beta, and there hasn't been any, you know, public showing of the game since before then. That's why you've been seeing all these, uh, you know, Let's Play videos, just and a huge influx of them. Like, the game has been crazy popular. It's the best-selling game on Steam right now, and it's the second most played game on Steam uh, behind Tota 2. So we're getting, like, a huge influx of information as everybody's trying to figure things out, which is always cool to be in on that kind of zeitgeist for a game. Yeah, th those are some pretty impressive numbers for sure. The lighting is... Everybody seems to like this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, people really respond to these kind of games and uh, seem to be one of them. Like, I definitely dig it, and especially if you have friends that like playing it, or you can get find a you know a group together or something. Like the co-op experience is really cool when you have a server going, and you know you can just log in and just see what your friends have built or what they're up to, and almost makes it uh, you know kind of a persistent world at that point or in this case a universe <laughs> well it's why people play certain mmos also i mean exactly I've been invested in the mmo scene since back when it really became like a real popular scene you know the original everquest asheron's call you know when world of warcraft originally launched you know ultima online you know just a lot of that stuff i've seen a lot of, yeah. lots of games that have tanked and so yeah and the mmo because what doesn't seem like it's almost it's almost like WoW killed the MMO. Like nobody else can really, you know, make a big one anymore. And now even WoW's finally starting to be in its twilight years. And I wonder if games like this are kind of the next, you know, evolution of that. I think WoW's been there for a while, just because they're you innovate so much and everyone tries to be that next thing by trying to copy instead of really just trying to to dig deep. Yeah. You know, relevant relevant to this game. And, and try something new, <laughs> uh, which is why I asked about you know, the whole Terraria and now Starbound thing. Like I, I know that if I was playing a game and I was really excited about something, like this just seems like more of an expansion to Terraria than an actual brand new game. Like how much are they charging for Starbound right now? It's fifteen dollars, and that's and, and you see, like it's hard, it's hard to be mad at something like that now. Yeah. Like if they came out with a full retail game, it's just like oh okay, like that seems like a pretty fair expansion price for something that. Uh, really does a whole hell of a lot different when it comes to the the end game, which is, I guess, where people eventually lose interest in stuff like this. Yeah, and I kind of had the same criticism when I first started playing, you know, Starbound, and, you know, you, you start out, and you've got, okay, your pickaxe and your sword, and you're just exploring the planet, and you're mining. I'm like, this is basically Terraria, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know if this felt like a new one of game, but then once you get to your spaceship, once you start exploring and seeing all the new... You know, jaded uh, mini events they've got in the areas and the amount of loot they have. 
But then just the concept of having all these multiple planets to go on with different biomes and structures and things, then you start seeing, okay, well, this is definitely a significant improvement and advancement on the formula. And just so the, now, is, uh, this what, is this what you guys do? You just you just keep on running, keep going until you see, like, oh, you know what, maybe we'll dig here for a while. Yeah, we'll yeah, we kind of, okay, you can see here's the, the night starting to come in. You know, we'll usually kind of go around the surface, and we'll see if there's a good cave to maybe check out. Sometimes we find a cave that leads, you know, halfway to the bottom or something. Usually oh it ends my up... god, no, it, it's getting really dark. Yeah, yeah, and all the harder monsters come out at night. You don't have the giant influx of zombies like you did with Terraria, so it's not just instant, like, frightening scariness. But uh, you definitely have to worry about your warmth, which I think my armor right now pretty much prevents me from getting cold, so that's why you're not seeing an issue with that. Huh. I'd like to see but you obviously can't enemy. see very well. You, the flashlight helps quite a bit. I like rocking the uh, the one-handed pistol and flashlight, and it looks pretty cool, too. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny. It's the, all about style light, points. The visuals for the lights are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoy that. The flashlight, like underground especially, you can really see how that looks. <laughs> this took his bed. So these, I guess, count as little mini kind of random things. We're just we're randomly we'll put something here, uh, you know, a person or bad guys or something. And other times it'll just be this like giant dungeon you can do. And oh, he, he died like he lived pointlessly. And the same thing for underground. We found like an underground like research laboratory that had a whole bunch of like potions and you probably saw that in our house. We put that in like a tower, and we just looted the whole place dry. <laughs> just took all that crap. It did. You guys are, are terrible people. I know. I guess the only way to play this game is like, uh, you play it like a race of, uh, like, locusts. You just go through and just clean everything out. <laughs> That's a good analogy. Right? Yeah, just swarm across the universe and the varied planets, taking everything locust for our own. Horde. I love the amount of creature design, too. You know, Terraria, especially when Terraria first came out, there were, like, a dozen different kinds of creatures, you know, and, and, and half of them were slimes. Whereas this game... You know, and they sh and they should, because it's a you know every game's a different or every planet's a different biome. Oh, he's saying dungeon. Where is he? And uh, and you know everybody should have their own little cool aliens and and neat little effects and stuff. All right, so where is this dungeon? dungeon? Yeah, I don't know. That was because I was about to say like it oh, seems like radar. this is basically yeah like we could. But if there's a dungeon there, why don't we check that uh, out before we wrap this okay, up? Okay, here we go. So you can see, here's something on the surface we see. It's just a random thing we found. I don't want to die from falling damage, that'd be bad. He said to use your radar. Like what? what okay, so that's there? actually uh, lava, careful. <laughs> and he knocks him down. Uh, you can see on the left side of the screen, there's a little kind of compass in the lower left corner. And uh, that represents... Oh dear, there is lava here. It's like Mario game. That represents where they oh, are like in the level. Okay. Yeah, their location. See, now, now this is kind of cool. I, I, I would definitely get excited if I'm just exploring it all of a sudden. Yeah, and you it's find just, these it's cool little areas. Yeah, and see, look. I mean, it's like, hey, that was cool. Let's just break that whole thing down and we'll take that. Like, all oh, that you shit's cool. Are, you really are. You're <laughs> space locusts. Yeah, that's how you end up with a really cool looking, you know, mansion on your own. You're Reapers. Ah, I need to heal myself. I'm going down. And you can see, the, the odd thing is, you know, these giant lava pit traps. Well, since you can build anything, you can obviously just build shit right over the top of it and kind of protect yourself. Alright, let's see what else ah. is in here. But yeah, there's like traps in here. There's a little bit of uh, platforming stuff. Oh, there's some guys. Oh, dear. So now these guys have like assault rifles and stuff. Blocked. Blo it, it looks like his shield is like a wreath. Yeah, he's got like a a plant shield or something. My inventory is full. I can't even. Pick Very effective up right now. against high velocity weapons. Let me tell you. I don't need this primitive statue or this weapon rack. We'll just put that back down there. You can take all these cool looking cages. I mean, I've never seen anything like this yet. And who knows how much of this stuff is there? Like nobody really knows, and that's part of the the greatness. Especially if you go anywhere near the forums, everybody's like, "Man, look at what I found." <laughs> I feel like. This is this would be a perfect like B movie game where a character just has the ability to just siphon anything around him and he just wants to build like what he <laughs> feels like. So he goes into places to destroy guys and he just breaks down all the cool stuff just in front of him. Just 
<laughs> exactly. He something, whenever he needs something like, oh, God, it's so dark out. Like he just quickly looks at his inventory and he just throws out some massive campfire. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty cool looking. And they even hinted some what stuff. Are, like you can find journals. That you have, you have so what is codex? What is typically in here anyway? I don't know. We're just looking at lava. I mean, we're trying to look for maybe I mean, a I, chest or something. Right. I mean, obviously keep looking, but you know, this obviously doesn't exist by accident. So you know, what, do you usually fight a boss in here? Are there... So there are randomly generated mini bosses we found that are just bigger versions of standard creatures. And they, uh, they'll they usually drop a random uh, cool weapon like this one was uh, randomly dropped from a mini boss. In terms of major bosses, I believe those are the ones that you have to craft something specific and represent like a big leap in, in where you are technology-wise. And then, uh... Can't you of... just... You could just keep digging, right? And eventually find oh, yeah. somewhere. Oh, yeah. We could just... Yeah, we could dig somewhere down. Oh, what is that? That's... Okay, that's bad. He's building shit over it. That looks like magma or something. Oh, he can walk on the bones also. I guess bones are bad. Or oh, that's kind of a lava thing. That's kind of cool. Oh, there's people down here, and they've got guns. Well, of course they do. Somebody put it to. We've they all do. got guns, fools. In fact, I've, I'm actually rocking uh, two one-handed pistol. Oh shit! That did a ton of damage to me. Got my ass knocked back. Whoa. Yeah, we might have to do a uh, retreat here. Oh dear. Things are getting nasty. You know what, this person looks like they're captured here, too. <laughs> I wonder if we can save them. Oh, dear. Look out, guys. Keep firing. <laughs> be oh, careful. God. That's going to be... Oh, I'm still alive <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Super run... I have no oh health God. bar left. <laughs> I have... Uh, let's see. I got one bandage. I can... So up here, you can see on the hot bar, you've got kind of your standard hot bar you can switch to. I can use the mouse wheel to scroll between stuff. But I've also got L and R. Now, if I hit the X button... I can quickly bring up whatever I've got selected in there, which is useful because, you know, you'll be sitting here mining shit, and then all of a sudden somebody will come attack you, and you can just switch to your your combat stuff real quick, which is cool. There you go. See? You need a bed. Just or sleep on yeah, it. Yeah, that's why they put that there. We carry beds around with us. Or with two one-handed weapons, I can do, you know, flashlight and, and pistol, too, which is cool. There's some crazy bandits just, like, right around the corner. And they don't even nap. care. Yeah, we're do just it. taking a nap. It's what we what do. If you regenerate your health at a... I guess a decent pace. I think better beds do it faster. <laughs> we need to get Space a Serta bed or something. I need my sleep number. Well, I want to see. <laughs> I want to see what's at the end of this before we we cut it out. I know. All right, let's let's see. Everybody's still here. Are those guys still over there? He's just busy looting all that shit. <laughs> Okay, I still... Those guys were kicking our ass, too. Oh, did we kill them? Oh, why did you kill the prisoner? What a jerk. We should save the prisoners. Okay, my friends are assholes. For, for what? Like, what is... I don't know. What, what, just... do, you, what do you actually get from There, that? see? He's our, he's our friend. Oh, no, he's not. He's a dick. Oh, God, kill him! <laughs> he did not like being rescued. Maybe he was I Stockholm guess Syndrome. not. That is... That's very I strange. assumed they were prisoners. Flesh. Oh, they're just assholes. Don't save the prisoners. You know what? Maybe they only like plant people. Because he's a plant Maybe. person. Well, they are saying flesh. Yeah. Apparently, apparently he's the a, plants he's a are fleshist. cannibals in, in this yeah. part of the galaxy. Let's just start. Oops. God, my inventory is literally way too full of crap. Let's just start throwing shit. Maybe if you kill so many, you'll anger the plant gods, and you have to fight. <laughs> this place is huge, though. Look at Plastic the size please. of this. Now, that person's got a cool sword. It's, is this not the normal size for a dungeon? I mean, I don't know what a dungeon is. Like, it can be anything. This shit is just all kind of randomly done. Wow, yeah, they you are. Just, you gotta keep, you gotta keep going. Dude. Those guys are pretty strong, though. Let's just keep going. I don't know. Do we want to go left or down? I say we go down. Yeah, you gotta go down. Yeah, go down. Who cares see. about killing those other guys? I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to sit there and rot. They're going to try to kill me and then screw them. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make sense to oh, open it up. And oh, 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 we shouldn't have landed there. 
<laughs> that was a that was a death. And there's a respawn. Since I'm a uh, bird person, I get to respawn as a as a little bird. Yay! <laughs> Evolution at hand, I guess. Uh, okay. So that means we spawn all the way back at our ship, which is a huge bummer, obviously. And a good way to penalize death in addition to losing a shit ton of your money. So the game is, you know, as much as it's about freedom and exploration and stuff, there's still a huge penalty to dying, so you do have to watch your ass. Is there any way that you can actually teleport directly back to where they are? No, there's no way to do that. I have to run back manually. They can you, they can yeah. always beam back. He probably just died. They can always beam back to the ship, but uh, there's unfortunately no quick way of getting back, which sucks when you're really, like, deep down in there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you die, well, which... I guess it's a good a good place to end it. I mean, it, it's kind of cool to see the so. dungeons in action, and we I think we showed off a, a pretty good chunk of this game, especially just it being still in beta. I know exactly. Like this is considered early beta. They're gonna do three phases, uh, you know. And, and right now we're in the crazy like patch every couple days phase, and just everything's coming in. They're getting a crazy amount of feedback. But uh, I mean, it's still very playable, and even you know multiplayer. Assuming you can get you know a server set up and, and do your port forwarding, then you know you can play with friends just fine, and it's been pretty stable. So it's it's been yeah, impressive they, that wise. You know, optimization. Yeah, they they got to do something with that. I do they hope, to... yeah, by the final game, I hope they, you know, some way to just browse servers. I don't, there's just got to be something. Doing IP address and all that is kind of some bullshit. <laughs> it, yeah, at this stage in where technology is, especially being on Steam, you, you really need to just be able to shift tab. At least be get... able to join, like, Steam friends or something, yeah. Right, yeah. It, it, it needs to be able to work like that. I mean, there's a reason why Games for Windows Live just doesn't really work that well on the system. I mean, take it from Relic, if you ever played the Dawn of War games, you know, Retribution, or, like, second expansion, they totally ditched the oh. games for Windows Live framework, so <laughs> it was all the better for it, you know? Yeah. It, just, it, it makes sense. I mean, thankfully, this one doesn't use that, but arguably, it's it's worse, <laughs> because we're going way back to the old school days. Yes. You kind of want to hear a 56K modem buzzing right now. <laughs> all right, well... Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to show us some Starbound. Uh, maybe we'll take another look at it after the game officially comes out, throws down all those patches, and, well, from what I've seen so far, it, it does look interesting, even from someone who uh, usually kind of stays away from these games. Yeah, um, <laughs> just trying out the little instrument thing, that's a huge deal. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I, can, <laughs> I can definitely recommend it uh, if you're into these kind of games. Um, and it's it's so early now, and, you know. I we could definitely revisit it, uh, even maybe farther down the beta when they've added some more stuff. But for sure during the final release. And as far as I know, uh, they haven't not announced any kind of date on the final game. I mean, we're assuming obviously 2014 at this point, since it is very much you know a playable state and everything seems to run pretty good. It's just kind of you know bug fixing, balances, optimization, and then a few uh, features need to be added. I think there's another uh, character race coming into. But, uh, I mean, yeah, for a beta especially, it looks really good. And obviously, you know, you pre-order, you can play it now um, throughout all the stages. And also, I've, wrote, I've, writ a, writ, I've written <laughs> a helpful guide for, uh, for new players that's on the site right now, which is uh, just kind of the crap that I've learned, me and my friends have found out while playing the game. Uh, but it's a Starbound Tips and Tricks for New Players. Hopefully that will alleviate some of the growing pains with this kind of game that you know, there is a tutorial line of quests that kind of helps you get started, but there's a lot of shit that you just wouldn't know. Um, but even then, I don't go too far into it, because, you know, a big part of the game is just, you know, finding shit for yourself and figuring things out. So, the fact that you can actually, act, you know, interact with this gong, and it plays a gong. <laughs> kind of cool. Kind of cool. All right, so where can people get involved with Starbound right now? How much is it? What are we talking? Let's get some details out there. I believe the website is... Uh playstarbound.com you can follow them at starbound game um, but yeah you can you can pre-order it on steam it appears as an early access game right now which is kind of a nebulous thing but you know essentially it means it's a game that's not finished they're still working on it which i mean i don't know as a side note are we just becoming to that point where gaming is just going to start becoming that like they're just going to release it at some point and we're just they're just going to keep adding to it and never know when an actual final release date is i don't know but uh you know, it is beta, but it appears under Steam as early access. You can buy it for 15 bucks, but if you buy it through the website, uh, you will get the soundtrack for free, and you get a Steam key anyway. 
So obviously that's probably the way to go since Steam kind of takes a cut for them. So if you want to directly support the developers and also get a free soundtrack, which uh, I might add, the soundtrack is really impressive. I've been enjoying it quite a bit. But uh, definitely yeah. check it out. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks again, Eric, for showing this off. For sure. Yeah, it was fun.